Nikola Tesla was a Serbian-American inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist. He is best known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current electricity supply system. Tesla was born in Smiljan, Croatia, then part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and studied engineering and physics in Austria and Czech Republic. After working for several years in Europe, he emigrated to the United States in 1884. In 1887, Tesla developed the concept of the alternating current electrical supply system, which is still used today for power transmission and distribution. Tesla also invented numerous other electrical devices, including the Tesla coil, a type of resonant transformer used in wireless communication, and the Tesla turbine, a bladeless turbine that uses fluid to generate power. Tesla was a prolific inventor and held over 300 patents in his lifetime. He also contributed to the fields of robotics, radar, and computer science. Despite his many accomplishments, Tesla struggled financially in his later years and passed away in relative obscurity in New York City in 1943. However, his legacy has endured, and he is widely regarded as one of the greatest inventors of all time. Going back a few years ago, the FBI released 64 pages of unreleased documents, and these were of particular interest because for many years theories had been floating around as to why Tesla's work was collected by the government. Many argued that the majority of Tesla's inventions would never work, so if this was the case, why then did the United States government quickly swoop in and collect his work shortly after he had passed away? Even the Central Intelligence Agency has released some interesting documents about the inventor and again have detailed that they collected some of his work shortly after he passed away. As many have pointed out, something had obviously caught these agencies' attention as they soon collected his work in order to comb through what he had been working on. One of their reasons for doing this was to ensure that any work of his didn't get into the wrong hands. For this reason, they decided it would be best if the documents remained in the property of the Office of Alien Property Custodian. However, this was until the documents and other pieces of Tesla's work mysteriously disappeared after the war. Interestingly, one document that was released by the Central Intelligence Agency reads as follows. He was particularly interested in high-frequency mechanical and electrical vibrations. He once claimed that, with only a pocket-sized vibrator, he could generate tremors that would split the earth in two. Some of his experiments were fantastic, like something out of an early film version of Dr. Frankenstein's monster. He built enormous coils at his laboratory near Colorado Springs, with which he generated up to 12 million volts of electricity and hurled bolts of artificial lightning hundreds of feet through the air. End quote. Much of what he did was shrouded in mystery, and some of his experiments have never been duplicated. Some admirers claim that Tesla foresaw the so-called Star Wars program. He tried to sell the War Department on the idea of building death rays that he claimed could melt enemy warplanes at distances of hundreds of miles. Some of those papers are held even now in the archives of various United States intelligence and defense agencies, where they are studied for clues that might be useful in modern weaponry. These are some extracts from the official FBI documents that got released. On 26th and 27th of January 1943, an examination was made of the technical papers of Dr. Nikola Tesla, which after his death had been stored in the Manhattan warehouse in New York City. This examination was made for the purpose of determining if any ideas of significant value in the present United States war effort could be found among his possessions. Participating in this examination were Mr. John C. Newington, New York Office of the Alien Property Custodian, Dr. Charles of the Washington Office of Scientific Research and Development, and John G. Trump of the Office of Scientific Research and Development of Massachusetts Institute on Technology. The following papers, which were regarded as typical of Nikola Tesla's writings and thoughts in the period of 1925 to 1942, were removed for the purpose of record and listed below in random order in which they were found, together with a brief individual abstract. Exhibit A possibilities of electrostatic generators. An updated article probably written about 1934 discussing the possibilities, as a source of high-voltage DC power, of the Van de Graaff type of electrostatic belt generator. The article states correctly the electrostatic principles employed in this device and points out that suck generators are not suitable for commercial high-powered applications, though of undoubted scientific value. Tesla's wireless tower 
erected in 1902 on Long Island, is stated in this memorandum to have charged to 30 million volts. Exhibit B, Reactive Force of Glycerin and Dynamite An undated memorandum involving some calculation of the explosive power of certain compounds and then deviating to a discussion of the possibility of transmitting power by mechanical vibrations along the Earth's crust. Exhibit C, Process of Degasifying, Refining and Purifying Metals a 40-page memorandum probably written about 1930 dealing with the above subject and proposing new theories of capillarity and surface tension. These correspondents indicated that this had been submitted to various industrial companies. Exhibit D. Replying to Antorg regarding the generation of high voltage and acceleration of charged particles. This document dated 8th of November, 1935, answers questions raised by Soviet engineers and scientists regarding Tesla's proposal of Ray. From this answer, it's deduced that the proposal concerned the generation of high voltages by electrostatic means. These means consisted of a high-voltage terminal, presumably supported on an insulating column, and charged by a gaseous charge conveying medium passing between ground and terminal. The ideas contained in this memorandum are fairly similar to the bolt conveyor electrostatic generator methods proposed by Van de Graaff, and do not appear to offer any unusual features. Exhibit E art of telegeodynamics, or art of producing terrestrial motions at distance. This document in the form of a letter dated 12th of June 1940 to the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company proposes a method for the transmission of large amounts of power over vast distances by means of mechanical vibrations on the Earth's crust. The source of power is a mechanical or electromechanical device bolted to some rocky protuberance and importing power at a resonance frequency of the Earth's crust. The proposed scheme appears to be completely visionary and unworkable. Westinghouse's reply indicates their polite rejection of this idea. Tesla said the following during an interview. I wanted to illuminate the whole Earth. There is enough electricity to become a second sun. Light would appear around the equator as a ring around Saturn. Mankind is not ready for the great and good. In Colorado Springs I soaked the Earth with electricity. Also, we can water other energies, such as positive mental energy. They are in the music of great composers or in the verses of great poets. In the Earth's interior, there are energies of joy, peace and love. Their expressions are a flower that grows from the Earth, the food we get out of her, and everything that makes man's homeland. I've spent years looking for the way that this energy could influence people. The beauty and the scent of roses can be used as a medicine, and the sun rays as a food. Life has an infinite number of forms, and the duty of scientists is to find them in every form of matter. Three things are essential in this. All that I do is search for them. I know I will not find them, but I will not give up on them. Many who worked with Nikola Tesla, along with documents that have been released in recent years, show that Tesla created or at least worked on a device known as a death ray or peace ray. It's reported that this incredible device could destroy or disable enemy targets using directed energy. What's interesting about this is that in recent years the United States Navy has come forward and said that they are now actively using this technology, saying that it has the ability to shoot targets out of the sky. In fact, the United States Navy said that they are now in possession of the most powerful laser on the planet. Some have questioned whether this technology came from Nikola Tesla. Tesla did have an interest in directed energy and particle beam technology, and he did conduct experiments related to these fields in the later years of his life. However, it's unclear whether any of these experiments ever produced a practical weapon, or whether they were simply theoretical in nature. In any case, Tesla was known more for his contributions to electrical engineering, including the development of the alternating current electrical system, wireless communication, and numerous other inventions that have had a significant impact on modern technology. In his life, Nikola Tesla had hundreds of patents and was considered a master of his time, being able to look at things with an open mind, one of these being the vibrational properties of the space around us. A famous Tesla quote is the following, If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. He understood how physical vibrations worked, and the effects they had on the human body, both good and bad. Tesla was the man responsible for helping his friend Mark Twain beat his constipation. Vibrational therapy is something that modern scientists have found interesting, 
with one recent study showing researchers that wounds exposed to vibration five times a week for 30 minutes healed more quickly than normal wounds. With the scientists saying that wounds exposed to vibration formed more granulation tissue, a type of tissue important early in the wound healing process. Nikola Tesla penned an open letter to talk about the process, saying the following. During the past few weeks I have received so many letters concerning the same subject that it was entirely beyond my power to answer all of them individually. In view of this, I hope that I shall be excused for the delay, which I must regret, in acknowledging the receipt, and also for addressing this general communication in answer to all inquiries. The many pressing demands which have been made upon me in consequence of exaggerated statements of the journals have painfully impressed me with the fact that there are a great many sufferers, and furthermore that nothing finds a more powerful echo than a promise held out to improve the condition of the unfortunate ones. The members of the medical fraternity are naturally more deeply interested in the task of relieving the suffering from their pain, and, as might be expected, a great many communications have been addressed to me by physicians. To these chiefly, this brief statement of the actual facts is addressed. Some journals have confounded the physiological effects of electrical oscillations with those of mechanical vibrations, this being probably due to the circumstance that a few years ago I brought to the attention of the scientific men some novel methods and apparatus for the production of electrical oscillations, which I learn are now largely used in some modification or other in electrotherapeutic treatment and otherwise. To dispel this idea, I wish to state that the effects of purely mechanical vibrations, which I have more recently observed, have nothing to do with the former. Mechanical vibrations have often been employed locally with pronounced results in the treatment of diseases, but it seems that the effects I refer to have either not been noted at all, or if so, only to a small degree, evidently because of the insufficiency of the means which have eventually been employed in the investigations. While experimenting with a novel contrivance, constituting in its simplest form a vibrating mechanical system in which from the nature of the construction the applied force is always in resonance with the natural period, I frequently exposed my body to continued mechanical vibrations. As the elastic force can be made as large as desired and the applied force used be very small, great weights, half a dozen persons for instance, may be vibrated with great rapidity by a comparatively small apparatus. I observed that such intense mechanical vibrations produce remarkable physiological effects. They powerfully affect the condition of the stomach, undoubtedly promoting the process of digestion and relieving the feeling of distress, often experienced in consequence of the imperfect function of the organs concerned in the process. They have a strong influence upon the liver, causing it to discharge freely, similarly to an application of a cathartic. They also seem to affect the glandular system, notably in the limbs, also the kidneys and bladder, and more or less influence the whole body. When applied for a longer period, they produce a feeling of immense fatigue, so that a profound sleep is induced. The excessive tiring of the body is generally accompanied by nervous relaxation, but there seems to be a specific action on the nerves. These observations, though incomplete, are, in my own limited judgment, nevertheless positive and unmistakable. And in view of this, and of the importance of further investigation of the subject, I prepared about a year ago a machine with suitable adjustments for varying the frequency and amplitude of the vibrations, intending to give it to some medical faculty for investigation. This machine, together with other apparatus, was unfortunately destroyed by fire a year ago, but will be reconstructed as soon as possible. End quote. So, what do you make of these incredible Nikola Tesla discoveries? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.